Okay, welcome back. So we're going to start looking at some examples of applying these ideas to the normal distribution. All right, so the first place we usually want to start with the normal distribution is the empirical rule. Okay, so say we have a normal distribution. Um, the mean is 36, the standard deviation is 4. So these are faculty members working hours, maybe distributed like this. Okay, so what if we wanted to answer this question? What percentage of faculty members work between 32 and 40 hours a week? All right, so recall our empirical rule. I notice here that, okay, my mean is 36. So 32 is minus one standard deviation. 40 is plus one standard deviation. So that's essentially asking what percentage is between one and negative one standard deviations. We know that is 68%. All right, we also could flip that around and we could say, well, how many hours does 95% of faculty members work? Well, we know 95% corresponds to two standard deviations. Okay, so if I take 36 minus 4 minus 4, that gives me 28. 36 plus 2 standard deviations gives me 44. All right, so that's one thing we can do with the empirical rule. So think about this. What percentage work less than 36 hours a week? Remember, 36 is our mean. It's symmetric, so that, one, that one's easy, 50. What percentage work less than 40 hours a week? Okay, so 40 hours a week, we already established 50% from the mean to the left. Now, 40 hours a week would be one standard deviation to the right. So 50 over here plus 34, that gives me 84. What percent work less than 42 hours? Okay, so 42, well, 40 was one standard deviation, so 42 is right here. It's in between, all right? This is where our empirical rule kind of breaks down, right? We can estimate that this probability is between 84 and 90-something, but we can't get an exact answer, okay? So this is where our standardizing process comes in. Okay, so before we standardize, just want to make sure we've got all these mechanics with our Z table and just finding normal probabilities down. Okay, so let's do something basic like find the probability of a Z score being less than negative 0.18. All right, so it's a less than problem. So using the table, all I do is look up where does it fall on my table. Now notice most Z score tables are set up similar to this where we've got our z-score to one decimal place in one column, the second decimal place in another column. I gotta find where they intersect. So this is a less than problem. My z-score table does give me the area to the left or less than. So I just grab that off the table, gives me my answer. All right, let's look at how to do this in Excel. So Excel has a lot of different normal distribution functions. If you just say equals, norm, all right, we see norm.dist and we see norm.s.dist and various inverse functions. All right, that dot s stands for standard, all right, the standard normal distribution. So whenever we're working with z-scores, we want to use one of these dot s forms. It's basically like just looking something up in your table. So we were looking for the probability of less than negative 0.18. Right? We're always going to want cumulative. So there's our answer. That should agree with what we got in the table. But we actually can get a little bit more precision to more decimal places here in Excel if we want that. So in mini tab, if I go to graph, probability distribution plot, click OK. By default, it'll be on your standard normal distribution. So I'm just going to click OK here. It'll give me my plot. Double click say shaded area, x value, we wanted less than, so left tail, negative 0 0.18, and it should agree with whatever we found on the table and whatever we found in Excel. Okay, 
let's try a greater than. So say greater than 2.09. Now most calculators, technology, the table deal with CDF values less than. Okay, so I'm going to convert that and say use my complement rule. That's the same as 1 minus less than 2.09. Okay, so using my table, I'm going to look up less than 2.09. So we'd find that. So I'm just going to, we'll look at the table here just to make sure we're on the same page. So here's 2.0, 2.09 would then be this number all the way over here. Okay, so 0.9817. So 1 minus that should give me my answer. All right, so how do we do this in Excel? Again, I can use my norm.s.dist function. My z-score, 2.09, cumulative. But remember, this gives us the left tail, so I need to say 1 minus this to get the answer that I'm looking for. Okay, over in mini tab, we had that value before. Let's shade a different area. Right tail greater than 2.09. And there we go. We don't have to tell mini tab to minus anything. We can just click right tail. Okay, the last kind of basic example that I want to see is what about between two numbers? All right, so let's pick two numbers where we know about what this answer should be. Right, we know this answer should be, according to the empirical rule, between one and two standard deviations, right, about 13.5%. Okay, so remember the process here. Take the area to the right of the larger value minus the area to the left of the smaller value. So let's, I think it's really helpful to see these, these pictures here. Right, so here's the area to the left of 2.02. .02. Here's the area to the left of 1.01. .01. So if I take this minus this, it should leave me with what's left in between, right? That's the idea of what we're trying to do. Okay, so to find this, find the area to the left of that from the table, the area to the left of this from the table, subtract the two, and it leaves me with right about what we thought. All right, so I can do that in Excel, just subtract them or in mini tab, this is a good uh, good use of mini tab here because it kind of saves me a step. All right, I can say, okay, we want it between 1.01 .01 and 2.02. .02. I don't have to worry about subtracting anything. Mini tab will just pop that right out for me. All right, so that agrees with what we found in Excel. All right, so. We've looked at a basic less than, a greater than, an in-between problem. So now let's actually apply this to distributions, right? Because here we were just given some random z-scores. So let's actually apply this. So let's go through the entire standardizing process here. Okay, so say IQ test scores are normally distributed with a mean of 100, standard deviation of 15. We want to find the probability somebody scores less than 112. All right, so the first step here is we got to standardize. We take x minus mu over sigma. That gives us a z-score of 0.8. Could take that z-score 0.8 to our table, find our probability there. Let's check ourselves with technology. Okay, so over in Excel, remember when we typed in norm, we have before used the norm.s.dist function. But that's when we have a z-score to deal with. Okay, using technology actually will let us skip that middle step entirely. So if I go to norm dist and I put in my value of x for the distribution, that's 112. Right? I put in the mean for the distribution. Third argument is the standard deviation. And then, of course, we want cumulative. Okay? I don't even have to look that z-score up. Right? I can just skip that middle step entirely. Okay? In mini tab, I'm going to make a new probability distribution plot here. And I'm going to put in the actual mean and the actual standard deviation of that distribution, which is 15. Double click on my density curve there, shaded area, x value, left tail, we wanted less than 112. All right, so that should give me the exact same thing as if I look up a z-score in the table. Okay, but by using technology, 
I've skipped that intermediate step of finding a z-score. Okay, so if we're using technology, we might as well make it a little bit easier. Okay, so that was a less than problem. Let's try a greater than. Same original distribution. Probability somebody scores greater than 120. All right, so again, standardize, find the z-score. Since it's greater than, I could find that table value and take one minus to get my answer. Let's check ourselves with technology. Over in Excel, I'm going to say norm dist. My mean x is 120. My mean is 100. Standard deviation 15, cumulative, yes. But also, i got to remember, since I'm looking for a right-tailed probability, I'm going to say 1 minus this to find the answer that I'm looking for. Okay, in mini tab, let me double click this, shaded area, right tail, just change my x value there, and we've got our answer. Okay, so left tail, pretty easy, a less than problem. Greater than problem, easy as well. I just got to make sure I remember to take 1 minus my table value. And of course, where it gets a little trick, trickier is one of these between problems. All right, like say we wanted to find the probability of IQ being between 67 and 94. So we actually have to find two Z scores. All right, now I found two Z score here, but be careful. Some people I've seen before subtract the Z scores at this point. But remember, we find a, co a corresponding probability for each Z score and then subtract. We don't subtract the z-scores. Okay, so in Excel, we could do it this way. We could do it twice. All right, not too bad. But this is where Minitab is very useful, again, to kind of save us some step. So let's go back to our distribution Minitab, double click, shaded area, middle. We wanted between 67 and 94. So there we go. Our probability, when we find it in mini tab, should be the same as what we got in our table, in our table, and via Excel. Okay, so now let's look at an example of working backwards or finding a quantile. All right, same distribution, but now we want to do something like find the minimum score that would put you in the top five percent of IQ. Okay, so essentially what we're looking for here is this x value in red where the probability of x being greater than some number is 0.5. Again, it's easier to work with less than. Flip that around. That would mean the probability less than that value is 0.95. Okay, so, so what I need to do is look up 0.95 on my table. Now what you'll find when you're looking up these values on the table is that we don't always have the exact value on the table. Lots of times we just kind of have to find the best that we can. All right, so when I'm trying to look up 0 0.95, now notice I'm not looking up a z-score of 0.95, right? That's not how we want to go about it. We're looking up a probability of 0.95. So here's 0 0.9495, 0 0.9505. So it turns out 0.95 is actually right in between these two. Okay, so usually what we use for... 95% is just split the difference here at 1.645. All right, then rearrange our z-score formula to solve for x. So I get an x value of 124.675. Let's look at how to do that in Excel. So let's look at our norm functions again. So I've got norm dist. I've got norm in, norm inverse. Okay. So I've got a norm.s.inverse, right? Where that helps us is, remember, we wanted a z-score for 0.95. We estimated it to be 1.645, but if I put in 0 0.95, I can get a more exact z-score there, okay? But when I'm using my Excel functions here, we don't actually have to even find that z-score. Right? I can put in 0.95. I can put in the mean, which was 100, the standard deviation, which was 15 and it'll just pop that x value directly out. Alright, if I want to do this in mini tab, double click here, shaded area. Now I gotta click by probability. 
right? We wanted a right tail probability of 0.5, it's like many tab read our minds here. So 124.7 is about where we should be. All right, so hopefully you're getting the getting the picture here that there's a lot of different ways we can go about doing all these. Um, pencil and paper, it's tried and true. Excel, super quick and easy. Mini tab, a little bit more visual. So let's look at another example of finding a quantile. And this is probably the, the trickiest kind of thing we could do. Remember, we've got less than, greater than, between problems. We have standardizing and we have unstandardizing. So the, the between were a little bit trickier. So this is an unstandardizing between problem. Right, the two scores that put us in the middle 50%. Okay, so essentially here's what we're looking for. So putting it in terms that we can work with, right, we need a Z score that corresponds to if we want the middle 50%. Right, so let's let's kind of draw a picture here. Right, so if we want the middle 50, that means there's 25 over here and 25 over here. All right, so 25 less than this number A, 25 greater than, or 75 less than this number B. All right, so now I need to find these probabilities. If we look them up in the table, you find 0.67. But using the symmetric properties of the normal distribution, you might not even need to look up the other one. Right? You should know that if there's 25% to the right of B, then the negative z-score should be 25% to the left. All right, then unstandardized twice. Um, Excel doesn't really have a great function built in for doing this. You kind of just have to do it twice, but it's doable. Excel is just a big calculator. Uh, Minitab is very, very useful here. So let's go over to Minitab, double click, shaded area, probability, middle. Now I do have to be careful here. All right, we wanted 0.25 to the left, but now I've got to be careful. You, you would think you would put 0.75 in here, but actually it wants the area to the right of that second number. All right, so I'm going to put 0.25 twice, and it'll give me the middle 50%. Okay, so hopefully now you have the basics of z-scores, working with the table, all that kind of stuff, and now we are standardizing. So there's less than, greater than, between problems, standardizing, then there's unstandardizing, finding quantiles less than, greater than, between. All right? So lots of stuff going on here, and, and we went through kind of an exhaustive list of examples here, but that's because we really need to get these mechanics down moving forward in the course. All right, so hope that was helpful. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time.